Hello, everyone at Euroscientist. This is Technoculture, and I'm your host, Federica Bressan. Today, I'm here with Michael Matlos, president of Euroscience and guest number one on this podcast exactly a year ago. It's so good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you again, Federica. So one year after, how has Euroscience evolved in one year after your presidency? Could you give some example of some concrete action undertaken by Euroscience? Okay, well, thank you very much for asking for an update after one year of, uh, of the presidency. Uh, what we've tried to do is to uh, focus ourselves more clearly on our main activity, which is uh, our role as the voice of the uh, scientific professionals and particularly researchers in their daily work uh, as uh, professionals of science in Europe. The emphasis is on the needs and the concerns of these professionals in a changing environment. And in particular, we want to do that by listening to our members, collaborating with others, and in particular associations that are working with young scientists and early career researchers, and also working on developing the skills and the mechanisms that are necessary for improving dialogue with uh, uh, society in general and at large on issues where scientists' voice needs to be heard. As concrete actions, uh, one of the things we did earlier this year was to launch a member consultation of our membership of Euroscience in order to provide uh, a better response to Coalition S on Plan S regarding open access. What we wanted to find out was how our researchers on the ground were reacting to the uh, new uh, proposals for open access publishing. And what we found was that uh, our community, our membership, because as you know, Euroscience are individuals independent of their institutional or company affiliation, uh, they're talking about their daily lives and what they are doing in their careers and on the job. So they're not very interested in business models or profit margins for publishing houses and things like that. What their concerns were, were essentially questions around how is their research going to be evaluated in this new context? Uh, how are uh, the peer review systems going to be modified? What are the uh, perspectives in the case of geographic mobility? What happens if someone who is in a Plan S compliant country decides to move in his career to another country which is non-Plan S compliant? Is that going to be a problem for his career? Uh, questions around uh, research publication quality when we're going from regularly established journals to other types of, of journals for open access publishing. And uh, access also, a very, very strong concern of many of our members, although we are in Europe, uh, members uh, who are concerned about the access for uh, researchers in developing countries to be able to publish their results. And we're moving from a pay-to-publish mode, from a pay-to-read mode. Obviously, it's better for readership, and we, we agree with the open access principles. But on the other hand, we don't want to make it impossible for people in other places where they don't have the resources to be able to publish their results. So these are a number of the things that we saw in that survey, which really reflect the interest of asking people on the ground, what do you think about what's happening? Uh, the second thing that we did earlier this year was to renew our uh, science policy working group at Euroscience by putting out uh, um, an expression of interest among our membership, among our 3,000 members, who is interested in really engaging and working with the science policy working group. And we got 70 very, very uh, motivated members of Euroscience who are interested in working. And one of the first things that we did was to use that group to prepare uh, our response uh, to the European Commission consultation on Horizon. Horizon Europe and the Horizon Europe program. We are now going to go fur further and look at other issues. Among the issues that we believe are important is increased emphasis on industrial research. Uh, one of the things that we don't always think of Euroscience for, uh, because many of our members are from the academic community, but we believe that we should be representing all researchers and science professionals, whether they're in the public academic sector or in the private industrial sector. And uh, what we would like to do is to uh, uh, talk about the career skills that uh, doctoral students have. As we know, uh, only uh, one or two out of 10 uh, PhD students will actually go into academia. The others will be going into uh, the uh, industrial and commercial sector. So we think it's important to work on that skill set. We also think it's important to emphasize how important science is for business and competitiveness of business in Europe. Uh, 
And uh, we also believe that uh, it's important for us to begin to think about the role of expertise and rethinking the way we deal with uh, conflict of interest in a general sense in public policy. Uh, it's not enough to say, well, if you work for a company, we don't want to hear from you. If you have expertise, what we need to do is to make uh, expertise more transparent in terms of the interests and conflicts that might exist, but not to avoid getting expertise from the people who actually are working in those areas. Uh, an important development uh, related to this is um, the idea of uh, setting up a new initiative that we would like to work on, on the question of research culture and integrity. Uh, this will be, in the first step, uh, focused more to the academic community. Uh, what we notice, and others have noticed the same thing, is that uh, there is a question in the current environment in academia of hyper-competitiveness, of uh, publish or perish mentality, and of the in insecure career perspectives. Now, that context, which is quite stressful in and of itself, uh, can lead to specific problems such as scientific misconduct, unfairness, and in the worst cases, even harassment and character assassination in the worst cases. What we would like to do is to work with others, other associations and interest groups uh, around Europe in order to collaborate with funding agencies, universities, research performing organizations uh, to see how we can advance a healthy working environment for researchers in the, in the communities. And the idea would be to formulate proposals and principles that can be adopted on a self in uh, um, a self-commitment basis, a voluntary basis, uh, by the actors in the research ecosystem, whether they be universities or research performing organizations, and that they focus not only on outcomes of research, but also on the working environment and how the research is performed. We think it's one of the keys uh, to developing the new talent that's coming up uh, in our uh, communities. Research culture and integrity are uh, essential components of societal accountability, uh, so, uh, scientific professionalism, and career development, and we want to work on that, and uh, we will be holding a session on that at the Euroscience Open Forum uh, in 2020 in, uh, in Trieste. Uh, we feel that we are particularly well positioned to work on this subject, um, and we will be opening up a subgroup of our working uh, group on science policy in this area of research culture and integrity, and I'd right, like to remind you that we were a major player in the development of the European Charter for Researchers and the Code of Conduct for the recruitment of researchers. With that background, we feel that we as Euroscience are an appropriate uh, actor to work on the issues of research culture and integrity in the current environment. Thank you for this update. A year is not a long time in many ways, but you've certainly kept yourself busy. You just mentioned ease of, so that's something else you've been working on with your team. Uh, you also mentioned ease of in uh, your interview a year ago. Of course, preparations started long ago. What will it look like? Well, we're really looking forward to uh, the Euroscience Open Forum 2020 in Trieste, Italy, which will be held from the 5th to the 9th of July 2020. Um, preparations are currently underway, and uh, we are very, very happy to announce that uh, the Trieste uh, Local Organizing Committee has received the largest numbers of uh, submitted proposals for sessions for any of the ease-off since the first ease-off in Stockholm in 2004. So we really see a lot of enthusiasm around the sessions and organization of the sessions. The program is currently being finalized and will be published soon. A list of keynote speakers will be published in November or December. Uh, registration for the conference, and I encourage all of the listeners to, uh, to attend the conference, uh, will be open from January 2020. Uh, Euroscience will be working with several European funding agencies, foundations, and universities to supply travel grants for young researchers. So we hope that we will have also the opportunity to have even even larger number of young uh, and early career researchers. And our, our uh, previous edition in uh, 2018 in Toulouse, about one-third of the participants were early career researchers. And we believe, believe it's very important that we get that community mobilized uh, around our conference. We will be organizing ourselves as Euroscience three showcase sessions uh, during the Euroscience Open Forum, uh, one on entrepreneurial careers that we will be organizing conjointly with the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, the EIT, and the Technology Academy of Finland. We will be also organizing a session on science policy and featuring our new science policy working group. And finally, a third session on research culture and integrity, as indicated in my previous remarks.
Um, not to forget uh, our interest and our interest, which has been constant since the creation of Euroscience, of associating our members with the concerns of dialogue with society. And as at all EaseOff conferences, there will be a major Science in the City Festival where uh, our researchers and participants will have the opportunity to talk directly to citizens about their concerns about the scientific endeavor and what science can bring. So I'm looking forward to seeing many of you, including perhaps you, uh, Federica, at the uh, EaseOff conference uh, in Trieste. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to give an update on Euroscience and to talk about our upcoming conference. Thank you for the opportunity to be on Euroscientist for this update interview. And I cannot but encourage everyone to register for this conference, also to visit the surrounding area close to my heart, 40 kilometers from my hometown, Gorizia. So beautiful place, plus this rich program. Thank you so much and hopefully see you again for a new update, maybe in a year or so. Okay, thank you very much, Federica. Thank you.